So I'm Melanie. I'll start introducing myself and then Fee and Mel can introduce themselves as well. But um, I am, I work at JDRF. I work in the insulin pump program, but I also work in the um, mental health sort of program that we've got. So that's involves, which is part of the community team. So um, involves doing these sorts of things and other parenting courses that I might have met some of you in, hopefully, um, in the last year or so. Um, so we're doing these sessions, these Let's Talk sessions that are all sorts of different topics throughout the year. So over to you, Fee. Hi, everyone. I'm Fee, and I'm a bit sad that you can't see my teeth in because I went to a bit of effort, so I'll just show you. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, so I'm Fee. I am a JDRF volunteer. Um, I am a paediatric and adult diabetes educator. I have also, um, I'm a mum, and I also have lived with type 1 for 35 years that clocked over on Halloween. Yeah. Um, I am still a wee bit jet lagged. I flew in from the US last Friday and was convinced by my 10 year old that he could go to basketball that night. And I think that has made me extremely tired. Um, so I do apologize if I. Uh, say something weird Mel will correct me um but my track well, going over there was incredible because um I just shared with before TSA cares amazing and I learned a lot traveling with type one and um, I'm looking forward to hearing you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves tonight I forgot to tell you the other bits about myself as well I forgot um that I'm a psychologist by trade but I'm also a mum to a type one I have a 18 year old um son with type one who was diagnosed when he was two so we've been through lots of different changes, lots of different years, and he's now living his best life, apparently, is the is the catchphrase of the moment, which means going out and drinking and having an absolute ball. And just a disclaimer, you know, we're here giving advice and giving um, tips and tricks and things like this, but ultimately um, go back to your teams. They're the ones that are the experts with you and your ch and your child. So go back to your teams for to clarify and check sort of things. But um, hopefully this is a space where you can you know learn questions to ask or or learn some tips and tricks that then you can go back to your team and chat about um because as some of you may know or you will learn very quickly the type one community is a wealth of information and i think it's a great place to draw on um and share and listen to experiences from everybody so welcome everybody so anyone how are you all feeling about your first christmas first christmases over to you guys scared scared what are you scared of I don't know everything. <laughs> swimming is a problem. Swimming okay. is scary. about how to manage it when they're swimming. Yeah. Well, we level. only just got told by our educators that there's a thing you can do on the pump that stops her going low. But she went to a water park with my husband on Monday, and there was like seven lows and lots of sugar and lots of fun probably too. No, um, no. I, I I did my best to to cope with the situation, but I just found that a uh, uh, BGL just rapidly dropped. Yeah. Um, throughout the day, so I was sort of feeding on the run, but um, also very you know worried about the um the way that it plummeted so quickly. So. But we're very new, so we didn't know there was an actual thing you can do on the pump to stop that from happening. Oh, that's okay. There's, I mean, we know, you know exercise and all those sorts of things can impact the levels. There's a million different things that it can impact. But I don't want you to feel guilty, guys. You want We want your kids out swimming. We want them out doing this stuff. So it's just about working out ways to, to make it work. Um, so firstly, thank you so much for sharing that stuff because... Um, you know what, I guarantee there's a lot of other people that are feeling like that. Mm. Um, first thing I'm going to say to you, and I'm going to talk to you as not only a diabetes educator, but I'm going to talk to you as B, okay? And um, I know that, you know, I'm one and the same, but B, who lives with type 1, knows that there's nothing she can't do without planning, all right? And so, therefore, when somebody comes to me and say, I want to walk the Kokoda track or I want to go to a water park for three days in a row, 12 hours a day, 
um, because they have long hours at those parks overseas, um, that I know they can do it. It just takes planning. Um, hypos are just one of those things that they build a fear into us as well, okay? Um, so the first thing I'm going to say, and I know it sounds like an easy cop-out, is to actually go to your team. And what I say, especially if you're in the new phase, and I even say to our crew, I don't mind if you're one month into diagnosis or 10 years into diagnosis, if you're going somewhere where there's a water park, if you're going to theme parks, if you're going to the snow for a, a winter Christmas, um, you can ask your team for a plan. So we always say to our families, you know, if you're heading, we have a water park near us. And so um, I, we often, we're hitting like, I think about 10 so far this week. Oh, we're going to the water park next week with the kids breaking up for school. So we actually do a plan for them. All right. Now, over the years, they modify and they go off and do them. But all your teams would be able to support you with that. But I want to share a really cool resource. And um, I kind of love it. But now, Mal, this is going to be problematic, isn't it? So, um, I'll bring it back up and share it a bit later. Um, but it is absolutely fantastic. It's called the JDRA Peak Guidelines. And it was actually the first time in the world with type 1 diabetes that um, people from all over the world came together and recognized how hard it is to manage diabetes and exercise. And so they had all these amazing people. I was very fortunate. I was invited to go to Canberra to the AIS and learn all about it. And then what happened is they developed these videos for families. Now, if you can get it with the American accent, they are absolutely brilliant. And there's one that talks about the benefit of exercise. There's one that talks about how do you stop the drop? Um, which is the lows. There's one that talks about how do you stop the highs. Um, and they are absolutely brilliant videos. Um, and we'll share the link with you and get them sent out. Um, but that in conjunction with talking to your team is really going to help. But we don't want any kids missing out on going to water parks and we don't want any kids missing out going canoeing and we don't want any kids missing out on anything. Um, and really, really important that they don't. And if you have specific questions, we can chat more with it. But I definitely recommend these amazing videos. And I would definitely recommend asking your team for a plan. So if you're planning to go to, I'm trying to think, um, so you guys in Melbourne, if you're going to go and buy a park, um, go and buy a world, um, to actually write to your team, email your team and say, look, could you please help us come up with a plan for come by a world? Um, and, you know, if you're on pens, you'll get a pen plan if you're on the other. And um, I would say majority, I have to be careful, but I would say most teams would absolutely do that straight away. Um, it just depends on access and things like that. But um, I think that's probably the best bet. Did you Diabetes... Did she Sorry. have a good day? Did she? I want to know if she had a good day, though. Yeah. Did you have fun? Yeah, she had an absolute. Oh, she had a fantastic day. It was very yeah. busy, but it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, she she had a ball, so it was really That's good. What we want, isn't it? We don't want diabetes to stop us. It's probably lots of. And stress there was actually there was actually a young girl. Oh, when I say young girl, she was probably about six years older in the line in front of us, and I had a chat with her parents about because um, she was on a pump as well. And yeah, I said, how do you how do you guys manage this? Yeah. So it was um it was good that sort of networking. Yeah, it's real. I I swear it's the best sort. It can be sometimes such a good source of information speaking to other people, um and other families in the community. I think it can be all sorts of really cool information and tips, and just nice to have other people knowing, you know, knowing other people are in the same similar situations. Um, Mel, I, I'm a I'm a big believer, and I know you and Mel are as well, is that diabetes is not a barrier to um, doing whatever you want to do in life. And um, I have this catchphrase at work that I say to the kids that diabetes is not a barrier to achieving your dreams. It just is a little bit more preparation. Yeah. Do everything just a few more steps. Can I just also give a, a really quick tip? When you're using all these really smart pumps, you know, whether they're temp targets, whether they're temp basal rates, whether they're a change in basal rate, it's really important that you start them, be guided by your team, but really important you start them at least one to two hours before that activity, all right? That's really, really important. And your team may say two hours, they may say 90 minutes, they may say three hours, um, but they're questions you can ask your team. But um, it's not going to work so well if you start like a temp target if you were on a Medtronic pump the moment you walk into, say, Disneyland because it takes yeah. two hours to work. Okay, <laughs> so that's the that's the part that we didn't know about, the, yeah. the temp target. So 
obviously we're very new to it. So that's um we yeah, didn't that... even change anything and she had I think eight lows on Monday. Yes. So okay. yeah, that that that's something that we're that we're sort of learning on the run and that's why this is obviously so important. But we yeah, like you said, we, it's not something that we wanted to miss out on, but we need to be educated further on that situation to be able to yeah. I know I don't want to hijack this chat, <laughs> but that's yeah, no, it's it, this is all information that we need to know, obviously. Look, I think it's, it's definitely too. I was just gonna say, Fee, I think it's important too that there's there are lots of guidelines and your teams will give you all sorts of guidelines, but it's also a bit of trial and error in term like in each family in each situation because sometimes kids don't act the way the books are supposed to the books say it is, you know, sometimes yep. exercise they can go really high because there's this adrenaline kick and they can be really excited. And so then all of a sudden you put a temp target on um, and they're, they've gone through the roof the other way. So it's about sort of learning yourself as you go along and you'll learn what works for your family in each of those sorts of situations as you go along. So don't beat yourselves up about having lows because it's, you know, this is just learning as you go along and you've got to work out what um, what works for your child and for you guys in those situations because um everybody is different. We all know there are these guidelines, but every person with type one is going to, um, can react differently. And then there's just random stuff that happens that just throws a spanner in the works and you're like, oh, I don't even know where that came from. So well, somehow- that's us now. We now have fluid on the lungs and ready pred and a very um, angry child. <laughs> and probably lots of high levels then. I would imagine. Yes, yeah. massively. It's, yeah. it's been a week. Yeah. But anyway, I don't want to, Someone else can talk now. <laughs> can, I just, can I just add something else to that? I think it's really important, Mel, and you touch on it beautifully, is that though we have guidelines and we might say, oh, do a temp target this many minutes before, a lot of people sometimes get confused and think they don't have to have extra carbohydrate as well. So even with these amazing temp targets, if you are doing a lot of exercise going up and down stairs and stairs and stairs, the kids will still probably need a compensatory. Now, some people call it compensatory snack. Some people call it an activity food. Some um, keep call it, you know, 10 grams, no bolus, um, whatever your team calls it. But just be really aware of that because I've known people that go, oh, we did a temp target and we still went low. And it's like, well, we still need to do food. But once again, you'll be guided by your team, but also your child's experience. Yeah. My son is newly diagnosed only one, like five weeks now. We had the first follow-up appointment. Uh, many, many questions, but like so many things that I believe from the parents that have more experience we can learn. And especially with toddlers, it's tricky. So how do they, uh, my son is still on um, uh, injections. Uh, so... When they go to a party, I know that they will snack, they will start and they will eat within, I don't know, many hours. What do they do? Do they give the insulin at the start, in the middle? I know that every child is different, yeah? But just I want to learn from their experiences because they will snack all the time. They will have the cake. They will be active. What do they usually do? I want to say, yes, go to parties and yes, eat food. And, oh, yeah. food and they will come in with the other bits. But <laughs> No, and I know Fee sits in the same place, but it's child first, diabetes second. And I think it's a it's a really important thing. So, and like Fee was saying before, we want everything to be possible, but there's there are bits and pieces that we can do to make it all work well. So um yes. my first thing is gonna be how do you know how when I talk to my families, I say to them, How do you think I know that your Christmas has been awesome? Do you know what I mean? And how do you know what birthdays are? So birthdays, Christmas, Easter, they're really special occasions. And if I say to somebody, how was your Christmas? And the parents go to me, oh, it was terrible. You know, the sugars went up here, the sugars went up here. Then they go, I need to work with this family to make sure that we can make this easier next time. So getting 99% time in range on Christmas, that's not what Christmas is about. Christmas okay. is about being together as a family. It's about enjoying those beautiful foods. It's about enjoying the running around. Now, Christmas, it's hilarious because, um, and it's the same with parties. You know, I'm thinking um, what happened at our place, Santa brought basketball stuff last year. So if my child had type one, oh, my goodness, he could have snacked all day Christmas morning because pound, 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 600 hoops. You know, you're at a birthday party and they're playing musical chairs. You know, it's this balancing act. And as you walk through it with your child, you'll be able to see what they can do. But often people go, oh, I'm really scared about a party because, you know, they're going to go high 
like, well, most parties, and now I'm finding with my teenage kids that I work with, you know, they go dancing crazy like the dance monkey. Um, and we were just talking the other day, you know, if you guys are going to dance to dance monkey, please have some snacks or, you know, do some temp targets. And they love that because they were just snacking with their friends and just what monitoring the glucose as well. Um, so in relation, it's exactly what Mel said, you know, Kids have got to be kids. You know, our kids grow up and this is the most exciting time of their lives as they're experiencing different things and family memories and, you know, summer holidays for all of us generally is something that we have, remember going back over the years. Um, and I must admit um, I've been diagnosed a long time now and I don't remember my diabetes ever affecting my memories of Christmas. When I think about Christmas, tell you the truth, I don't actually think about diabetes. I, they, those memories don't come into play, um, which is means my parents did an amazing job of letting me be fee and grow up as fee. Um, they're scary, though, and totally get it. Once yeah. again, talk to your team. Absolutely, they'll help you with all that. But please remember that parties, Christmas, oh, they're crazy cracker times. If you give um, rollerblades to a child, you know, they're going to be burning up energy um, to the teenagers. If they get one of those wave riders, if they're as dodgy as what I was, um, they can probably snack every 15 minutes if they were doing it because I kept falling off my board when I was learning. Um, I don't think kids are as, um, you know, uncoordinated today as what I was. Um, so what I would say to you is... Make sure that you guys, the first focus is family, memories, having fun. Yeah, you know how to treat a low, so treat a low if it happens. If you go above target, you know how to treat a, a glucose above target um, and enjoy the It's day. not the end of the world, is it, Fee? It's not the end oh. of the world if on Christmas Day they're above target. It's really oh. not the end of the world and it's not okay. yep. it's hard enough to to not do things or to, to stress yourself oh. out of the day. Because, um, you know, Christmas Day is a chaos. We've had days over the years that he's just been high. I remember we, one year we had to do a set change and a sensor change on Christmas Day and my son's like, not on Christmas Day, but it just had fallen on that. And I was like, yeah, we don't want to have to deal with diabetes and stuff on those days. If they're those special days we can, we can try and avoid it. Then we need to give ourselves those because we have to think about every other day of the year, almost lots of other days of the year. So, um there are ways you can do it and like these saying and like I don't know if other kids people parents want to share um parties are often kids run around and go nuts and they often need that food so they get to snack and it's really cool I always think of Halloween my son always used to go low doing Halloween so we get to eat the lollies and like go for it man so it was always you know it always kind of um worked out and balanced so they get the enjoyment of it um without diabetes getting in their way and now you know what I always say um, the lolly bag thing always comes up oh my child can't have a lolly bag. And I've been speaking to our dietitians and mates of mine that are around Australia and overseas, and most of us all have the same thing. And that is, you know what? Our kids should eat as much of their lolly bags as every other kid, except every other kid just tends to eat them all at once. You know, ideally, every child, be without or with diabetes, should actually break that lolly bag over a week. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, they can collect their lolly bag and then they can, you know, work out a trade system um, as well. If they don't like that one, they want something else. But, you know, don't say no to kids being able to, you know, have a lolly bag. That's part of growing up. They might have a trade system later. Your family might go, I don't really want them to have lollies. But even if they didn't have diabetes, I wouldn't want them to have lollies. Um, my son doesn't have type 1. He has anaphylaxis. We do a trade system. So he'll collect his lollies, he'll give them to me, and one day he he's, he's taking advantage of it now because he'll one day decide he wants a lolly trade, but other days he'll go, oh, no, can I have something else to trade? So, okay. you know, mm -hmm. it can work. Sorry? I'll have cash, thanks, Mum. I'll trade no, which, no, Don't let him hear that. No, we haven't quite got to the money trading. Um, but, you know, that's a really important part of growing up, being able to have a lolly bag. So um, some families it's really important to have a, a candy um, stocking for Christmas. Um, you know, there's ways we can work around it. You, and But I think it's really important not just to be able to, I think Mel, it was last year or the Mel's, it was last year that somebody shared experience that they gave um, insulin for chocolate and things like that from the lolly bag. And then the child had a number of hypos and they learned from that that, oh, well, firstly, chocolate's low GI, so that was it. But also they were given rollerblades and they were going nuts on the rollerblades and, yeah, they actually didn't need all that insulin.
Um, bigger tip, and this is one of these things that you'll see on um, those videos, but a really good reminder with parties, Christmas, all those things, if you have insulin, within two hours, you're at greater risk of going low if you're doing a lot of activity. So if you know the kids going on rollerblades on their bikes and they skateboard straight after Christmas, then you'll work with your team to modify what you're going to do with that insulin before. If you haven't changed the insulin, it will just mean they'll require more snacks. And hey, there's good snacks at Christmas. My other tip for parties is to make sure <laughs> your age of your child, I guess, but is to make sure you take some um, sugar-free drinks yes. or something like that that they can have. Because often, so I'm thinking my son's a bit older, but so for you, you've got older children, often they'll be going to parties and all of a sudden there's no diet drinks and it's just water. And it's the, if it's, there's a choice of water and Coke or Fanta or something like that, and often our kids are probably going to be going for the, the full strength stuff. So if there's a diet option or something like that, I've always learned well and truly over the years just to make sure he takes one drink with him so he's got an option to make a smarter choice, <laughs> a more helpful choice in those moments than um, going the full strength stuff. So that's a little tip um, that I've learned over the years to make sure if they're going to other parties and stuff that we're not going to be there or those sorts of things that there's... um those sorts of options available to them as well because they're never going to choose water. Most kids won't choose water if there's something else available as well. And now another really top tip with that is that especially at Christmas when you yep. go out um, is to have like a juice box or a muesli bar in your bag. So if the kids are at a family dinner at a restaurant and they start eating dessert and then go, oh, I don't like that, that's disgusting that you've got some extra things that you can quickly get into them rather than if you ask for a waitress 15 minutes later they arrive. Yep. So that's a, a feed quick tip as well. I must admit I always carry a Diet Coke in my bag when I go out. I'll just start quickly. I know, Melly, you asked for other parents' experiences too with parties. Well, we found it really hard at first parties, but and my son's a little bit older. He was six when he was diagnosed. But one thing that took me ages to like figure out is – you know, they see all the food and, you know, he would take this plate of food and we'd calculate it and dose it and then he just wouldn't eat it because it's not yeah. like, you know, he'd have one bite of cake and decide he doesn't want it or, you know, like it's not usual food that they know. So, yeah, we just started finding that we don't dose beforehand at all yeah. um, because the combination of what you guys are saying, all the running around, but also that he just often ate a lot less. Um, we t I tended to wait and see what he'd actually eaten and then dose afterwards. Anyway, that was the only thing on that. Um, I, I was actually going to ask a question relating to the first question that the guys asked, like about exercise and the water park and things. Yep. Um, my son goes really low whenever he runs around as well. And what we've started doing, he's on a pump too. And our problem is if we try and feed him up beforehand, even if we've put him on like exercise mode, the pump will give corrections. Like we won't let us get high enough before he starts exercising or, you know, gives him some insulin and that he then ends up going low. So we've just started taking the pump off. Um, you know, like depends what we're planning to do. But if we know it's a big day, we just take the pump off because we it just mucks it up for us and our team aren't very happy about that. Um, but I guess what I don't really understand and I have asked this to them and I don't really get the answer is like, I know the pump shouldn't be off for more than 90 minutes, but if he's sitting low and the pump is off, I don't quite get why that's a problem. Like mm. that makes sense. Yeah. I want to say yes, that it's, that I would say that it's fine to have you, um, the pump off while, you're ex while they're exercising and while they're doing that, especially, I mean, I think it's tricky. We've got, you know, we have these smart pumps now. We have these amazing smart pumps that that have all these auto modes and all these sorts of things that sometimes throw a spanner in the works, whereas before we would have just suspended the okay. pump. So a couple of things here. The first one is, and you do need to talk to your team, all right, because they're going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you, and this is everywhere around the world. So it depends on your pump. There is a way to stop your pumps doing auto corrections, okay? So, for example, if you're on the T-Slim pump, that does an auto correction of 60% every hour, all right? So what the company has actually said, that if you do, and you need to talk to your teams, but you can actually do a tiny little bolus, okay? Tiny, the lowest bolus you can get 
prior to the kids starting the activity. And that means there will be no correction for one hour, okay? So with the T-Slim, that's a really well-known fact that they can all do. And that stops those corrections for an hour, okay? Now with the Medtronic pump, if you are on a temp target, that actually will stop all corrections as well, all auto corrections, okay? Um, CAMS APS, um, there's a way that they can change it as well. So you need to talk to your team to find out with these smart pumps, what can we do to counteract it? Because it's actually you're quite... Like a, you're doing like a little fake bolus. No, no, it's called like a... Like it's, a little... point, it's .05 units, you bolus. And that will keep you clear for the next hour. Um, so you don't put food or... Yeah, it's really interesting what can done. Um, all the teams will know about it. It's very well known with T-Slim. Um, and it's just the, the smallest bolus you can do. And it's that will stop any corrections right now. When they're exercising? Are you taking the pump off while you're exercising? Like, are they? Yes. Yeah, well, so, uh, do you know, the team did suggest that to us. But, like, an example is, say, when he's got a basketball game mid-morning and we'll give him a reduced dose of insulin with breakfast. But between when he finishes breakfast and when he starts his basketball mm -hmm. game, yeah. instead of letting him sit at 10 or 11, which is where we want him before the game, it will correct, it will give a correction and we'll rock up to basketball and I'll look at it and go, oh, it's given him more insulin. And they did suggest that fee. I guess the problem with that, it's just that I keep forgetting, like they say, oh, an hour after breakfast, <laughs> give the smallest dose it will allow so that it mm -hmm. won't give a correction. But, um, you know, like when all of the other things in life are going on, I forget yeah, it's an hour good. since breakfast. But and do you know what? It doesn't even, cricket. V, it doesn't have to be an hour though. Um, as long as you have an alarm on your phone that's going to trigger, that as long as where you don't want him doing the corrections is, um, you know, safe. I see what, and, I see what you're saying. Important. When we do it, we buy ourselves an hour rather yeah. than that it has to be an hour since the last yeah. The, okay. other, the other thing I was going to say to you is really important, um, and I know that I'm doing this amazing handball 55 times in a minute. Talk to your team, though, because with the T-Slim, you can actually set up different profiles. You can set up a basketball day pattern, and we do that with our kids. I'm really blessed. I have my 10-year-old. He's my human guinea pig. He runs crazy. When he hits the ground on the court, it's wool. <laughs> and you know I often look at him and go wow you know I need to think what would I do what would I tell our kids and I have used that information but you can set up a basketball profile because what you don't want to do is make him so high before the game because of those things so there's stuff your team can do to help you with that and you'll be really yeah. surprised how well that can work yeah that's a good idea I hadn't thought of just doing a different profile for basketball and I guess you could have like a water park day profile or like that kind of thing when you know that you're just not going to need much. And look, sometimes what people do and your teams, once again, I know our team has a, a bit of a policy. We use or a guideline. Your team will have one. Um, but sometimes what they do is they just say, right, we'll have this percentage of basal rest for huge high intensity activity. And that might be swimming. It might be surfing. It might be dream world. Um, and then we have one that's a little bit less. Um, basketball or soccer, actually, um, basketball can be some of that, is and footy definitely is, is this adrenaline spike. Mm. So that's why we set up footy patterns because we want to protect the kids coming down the other end. But definitely talk to your team um, and they will be able to help and guide you and give you some of those little clues um, to avoid that. And now, sorry, your other question, being off the pump. I must admit I'm a stickler. I think all diabetes educators are. The risk of being off the pump more than two hours, um, and we say 90 minutes because really, and I'm, I'm terrible at this, you know, say 90 minutes, I'll be two hours. You say two hours, someone will make it two and a half. The risk of being off the pump longer is that ketones can develop very, very quickly, okay? So that's why that everybody is saying, you know, 90 minutes. Now, what I'm going to say to you is I say to everyone, once again, this isn't a diabetes thing. Everybody should be getting out of the water every 90 minutes to two hours to slip, slop, slap, have yeah. some water and have it's a snack. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like when I talk to my teens, I say, guys, you're not special. You know, this is everybody should be 
mm-hmm. eating when you're drinking and all this stuff. And it's the same when we talk about exercise and when we talk about the beach and all those things, everybody should be out of the water um, at that 90 minute mark. Um, especially our sunrays um, down in Victoria, you know, it's when it's 40 degrees, you can fry pretty quick. And even though suntan lotion says five hours, I don't know. It doesn't last. It does. Yeah, it does. And speaking of the beach, I'll ask one more question and then give someone else a turn. So we weren't on a pump last summer um, and we've had one day where we were at the beach since we've been on the pump and we had to do a site change because when we took the pump off for him to go in the water, he then got sand in the um like where it connects it's hanging up on his stomach yeah yeah is that a com- is that something that happens commonly or like is there any kind yeah. of work around do people put something over it to try and protect it be good to hear what the whole team says here but from my personal experience and working as a d um what i would say is that in all your infusion set packs there usually is a cover or a cap um, so they're the ones I say, not necessarily for a shower, but if you're going to the beach, it's a great idea. Um, it also makes it smooth. So that means that your bathers and things aren't going to tug on the side and keep them in longer. But what do other people do to prevent I was that just going to say the other thing to think about is where it's where this where the site is, if you know where you're going beforehand. So my son, for example, always has his at like the top of his bum. So it's under his undies, under his shorts, you know, so it's it's protected generally in that sort of sense. So I don't think we use those caps anymore. We used to. Um, but he doesn't sort of use those as much now, but it doesn't seem to be an issue because they're they're more protected. Like it's got double layer of protection um, in that sense and give it a, he'll just rinse it out and just connect back up and off he goes um, generally. But yeah, I think so. Have a, I think, think if you've got time, if you if you know you're going, you know, and you know um, it's sort of last minute thing, you can kind of plan around where you're, um, where the sets sit can be helpful as well. Hey, another top tip. Um, is to actually try to, you know, it's hard um, sometimes because we are spontaneous and that's what we want is spontane- spontaneity, um, but it's actually to work out when a line change is due too. So if you're going to line change due tomorrow, go, you know what, we're actually going to change it today after the beach. Yeah. Works so well. I love that one. I use it myself. Yeah. Another top tip, uh, I should. this is jet lag top tip talking, so I do apologise. Um when like I'm traveling on a plane, such as when I was flying back from the US last week, I actually put in two sites because I'm notorious. I will knock one out and I just really don't want to do a line change there. So I just move it over to the other one and that works really well. Works really well for school camps as well. Yeah. And Sarah is saying that they use it all the time because they're following the rules to the T. Well done. They're saying they use the caps all the time. Do you know what? The caps are real. I think the best thing about the cap is making it smooth yeah, and you yeah. don't catch it as much um, as well. So we're worried about another one. Go Can please. I ask what a cap is? What the so um, have you got one thing? So it's so yeah, when you, you, you set change, so is your child on a pump? Yes. So um, I'll get one. So where the pump connects to your tummy, or wherever you've got it, there's a, a cap often in the in the sets and reservoir pack, like your sets pack. That you can clip in depending on which sets you use. What what does your child use? Are they using? Um, Sorry, yeah, she uses a Medtronic Seven Eighty, and so there's a little um, blue. There's is it? She using the Mio sets, like the Mio, the click in, the click ones, like the. Oh, uh, there's just a little thing you click in to stop any oh, water gathering. Getting we call it the we plug. The but plug. There you go, the plug. There you go. That's what yeah. it is. Okay, but every sorry. time we lose one, we're like, Merry Christmas, here's another yeah. plug. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what that is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Snap lock yeah. plug bags. What? Plug bags? Snap lock. Yeah, you start a little snap lock bag and you put your yeah. plugs in. It works well. No. There you go. We've worked it out now, yeah? Yes. Yes, yeah, yes, I know exactly. We're that's just calling it a different thing. No, no, it's okay. Sorry. Yeah, ours keep on disappearing though. Yeah, I'm not surprised. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just take them off and my son doesn't use them. I cannot remember the last time we have it, he would have ever used one. That's oh my god, them on the ground city. and then says Merry yeah, yeah, Christmas think, when we find one. Yeah, I think that sort of um that kind of happens. Is it I wanna say, is it taught to use them all the time, Fee, when they're teaching pumps? Do you know what? There's so much that goes on when you're learning a pump. Yeah, I feel like it's something that would just be missed often, to be honest. It's not your real life. I mean, look, yeah. you know, I'm blessed. I have type 1, so 
Um, those are the little things that, to me, if I um, make a difference. Um, but if I tell them on day one, they won't remember it four weeks later. So I always say it a bit later on. My daughter, who's 14, um, recently diagnosed, um, we haven't quite learnt about flexible dosing. So we've got set, you know, um, number of yeah. um, injections units per day. Um, and as part of this conversation, I'd really love to understand if there's going to be any talks around, um, like, what is it we should be preparing for over Christmas? Is it the the dosing for, you know, copious amounts of food or it's the holiday period, so my teenager's going to be sleeping in and potentially, you know, missing a dose? Do we then... What do we do? I know I need to obviously speak with my team about this, but we'd be great to just get some really useful tips around, um, you know, Christmas, food, um, and what to really prepare for um, Would and, and relative to flexible dosing would be great as well specifically. Yeah. Um, firstly, it's really important to acknowledge that there's no – one type of um, therapy that is best for everyone, okay? Um, you know, some people talk about how insulin pumps are brilliant, flexible insulin delivery. Um, you, all different teams have a reason why they do things or suggest something. So yeah. that's something to know that it doesn't mean that your daughter, you know, she still can't do all this amazing stuff. So firstly, let's have a chat about sleep-ins. Tell somebody jump in there and tell me, why can kids sleep in to 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock um, one o'clock it's time for them to get up and you know make mum and dad a coffee but um, why can they sleep in no matter what therapy they're on what time why can kids sometimes be able to sleep in and not worry about brekkie or morning tea does anyone know no well it would depend on what what long acting insulin you have so if you're on um, the 24-hour acting insulin such as octicillin and is your daughter on octicillin yeah so a lot of places, if you take optisolin in the morning, then 24 hours means you've got to have it in the morning. So majority of places, kids around the world have their optisolin of an evening. And that means if they have it at 6 o'clock at night, they don't need to have it again till 6 o'clock the next night. What does that do? Well, that allows them to sleep in till 10 a.m. and not to have an injection. Great, now we CGM, we can actually look at the CGM to see what their glucose is tracking. In the past, we used to have to wake them up to do a finger prick. Um, but we can actually give them that sleep in. So your 14-year-old daughter, she can definitely have a sleep in. Does she have her optisolin in the evening or in the morning? She has her long acting in the evening around 8, 8.30. Well, she can sleep in. Please, not she's not listening, is she? No. <laughs> Good. No. She can sleep in till 8 p.m. at night, okay? And nothing will happen. If her optisolin, though, if she was sleeping to 8 p.m., isn't quite right and she rises, depending on what your team have taught you, she may need a correction. But um, I always make sure I do not tell my kids that they can sleep until 8.30 at night because they would probably try to do that. Um, so that's the first one. The second one is with all this food, and this is what it comes back to, and that is Christmas is a time... Um, if it's Christmas, if it's Hanukkah, um, all of those things, it's, it's the food is such an important part of it, all right, uh, and we want kids to be able to enjoy it. Even on fixed doses, kids are able to modify. So I would definitely be reaching out to your team mm. and saying, um, with her fixed doses, does she have fixed amount of carbohydrate she has to have? Yes, yeah. in grams, yeah. Okay. But in she's grams. all over the place and... Um... Sometimes you, she may not, yeah. Yeah, you can actually email your team and say, if she has an extra 30 grams, how much extra insulin? When you say fixed doses, is that that she would, example, have 10 units at brekkie, 10 units at lunch? Yeah. So yeah, you can it's actually 12, say 10, that. 14. She's got to eat yeah. a certain yeah. amount of grams yeah. of carbs with each of those, yeah. 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 So you could actually say to your team, can you please tell us how much extra insulin we would need to have if we were going to have an extra 30 grams of carb? Can you please tell us how much we should take off if we were going to have less than 30 grams of carb? And they should be able, they would be able to do that for you. But Lily, oh. is, is, your, is your daughter worried about what she's going to be able to eat? Is she worried about that? Well, at the moment, we're quite regimented, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, if she's, take, if she's doing 
pre-breakfast 12, pre-lunch 10, pre-dinner 14, then we panic that, you know, she doesn't, that she makes up the carbs for it. And we're just not sure how much to take off and how much to add on to each pre-meal um, time to make it a little bit more real. <laughs> Yeah. Lily, my biggest advice would be to contact your team. Yeah, Sounds say like you want to be on insulin, you want to be on flexible insulin delivery and just ask them, can I please can we please switch over? Um, you know in the I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put my mum hat on and be pushy. Yeah. You, know, you can you can yeah. push for that because yeah. that's what's important. And you know, if you if you guys can understand you're understanding what's happening with this with the fixed dosing, then then there shouldn't be a reason why they can't help support you go to something more flexible because because otherwise what we end up with is a 14-year-old that starts hating diabetes because I don't get to eat what I want or mum's making me eat all this stuff when I don't want to eat it and it just creates conflict and drama and that's what we don't want um, when it comes to um, how we manage our type 1. So I think... Um, you have to say something, that, Lily. See that pushy mum that yeah. and don't feel, what, don't feel bad about that because you, you are going to be you're the expert in your child. And, you know, even though doctors have more in, in like education in terms of um, diabetes and stuff like that, they don't have it in your child. And that's your, that's your role. So you, you get that option and that you've got the ability there to push that and just say, we really want this. We've heard about this. I want to know what we can do. How do we do it? Um, we want to make this easier for all of us. Um, and if they say you can't do it till March, say that's fine. But can you please tell me how we are going to now um, work this out on um, fixed doses if we have 30 grams less or if we have 30 grams more? Yeah. And then they'll probably go, oh, oh, I think we might teach you flexible insulin delivery. <laughs> um, but, you know, you definitely, look, even as a healthcare professional, what I would say, you have a voice yeah. uh, and it is so important you use that voice because you see us this much out of the whole year, okay, you guys are the actual leaders. You guys are the chiefs. We're there to support you. What I say to people is that we have lots of tools. You then choose what tool you want to use. Not that I am a tool, as some <laughs> of the boys have tried to suggest, but more that, you know, you have the tools in your package and you pick what's right for your family. Can I say something to that as well? Because I think um, Lily and I might live in the same area because we're both on the local Facebook group. And so I would think that we're both under the same hospital. And I had that same thing um, with the fixed carbohydrates um, with my son and they do flexible dosing courses every few months. And I was told that there was a waiting list. So I emailed the dietitians because I was going to pay someone privately to do it. And they ended up bumping me forwards. And so we did the flexible dosing last week, which has made such a big difference in terms of us being able to um, not just meant because his blood sugars were just high all the time. And I couldn't, like, we didn't know how to give correction doses. And so we were just giving like, you know, a fixed dose based on the set amount of carbs. So he, he can eat less or more now, but also in regards to, um, like Christmas and parties, everything, Lily, I just I just emailed them about everything. And so when we had grand final day and we were looking at eating in the afternoon, I just emailed them and said, well, when we were still on like the fixed everything, what should I do? And they gave me advice on all of that. Um, and I just found like I just have to, I just, any question that I have, I would email the di dietitians or diabetic educators and they were really helpful. So um if you see on that Facebook page, Lily, we're on the same one, so you can message me and we can touch base if you like. Great. Thanks, Melinda. I will. Good ideas. Yeah. Um, my daughter is currently on um, multiple daily injections. Um, we are waiting for the pump. Um, she was diagnosed five weeks ago and we are waiting for the pump. It could be at any time. Um, but I have heard... Um, first time pump is also a new experience um, and especially with a four-year-old um, so we are thinking maybe next week or week after very close to Christmas I'm a bit hesitant to go on the pump with the four-year-old very close to Christmas and have take that anxiety and stress again as well 
Um, I'm not sure whether it'll be the case because I haven't been there before. Uh, would very much like your ideas and opinions if you have anyone has done this before and you especially this time of the year. So Kavi, the first thing I'd say is it's exciting. All right. Um, at the moment, your daughter's on flexible insulin delivery. Is that right? Yes, that's so right. The, the way to think about a pump, and especially when you're on flexible insulin delivery, is you're pumping on pens. Okay. So what you're doing now is basically on a pump, but it's pens that, you know, you're doing the same thing. You're working out the calculations, but you're giving an injection. All right. Yeah. So if you think of it like that, that swap over to it is you know, very much the same. The other thing is you know how to give an injection. So if something went wrong with the pump, you know how to give an injection. The third thing is that the main thing when you start a pump is that you have contact with your team. So if they, then no one is going, there is no one crazy enough in the world, I would know there isn't, to start a pump Christmas Eve because everybody knows that you need adjustments, okay? So the thing that I would be asking people is, and I'm sure they'll give you a whole package. I know our team does. that will tell you what days you have appointments, when to call in, all of those things, that they will actually give you contacts. And it is scary when you start something new. Um, but that's why you have right. So the first day, if this happens, this is who you call. If this happens, this is who you call. If the blood glucose level sits 16 overnight, then you do what your team says. So, for example, my team might say, if you're above 15, you check for ketones. If there's no ketones, you know, and they give you a plan. Um, if you've got ketones in our team, it would be you call the doctor, and that's a lot of teams overnight. So there will be backup for you. So um, when insulin pumps really took off a number of years ago, there were a whole lot of guidelines written, not just in individual hospitals, but actually all around Australia came together and said, this is what gold standard is, and everybody needs to follow that, and they do. Hopefully. Okay. It's yeah. just that um, may, my idea of pump was um, to make my and my four-year-old life easy, especially during the Christmas time. So I may be wrong, but then um, when she asks, some, now the problem is I had to calculate two hours prior what she's going to eat and inject mm-hmm. her accordingly. And after, within that two hours, whatever she wants to eat, if it's, um, I, have, I have to ask her to wait for another two hours, especially it's if it's a lot of carbohydrates. But I, um, we have had that discussion, I can just dose for just for carbs, but um, giving uh, seven, eight needles for a four-year-old is a bit challenging sometimes too. Completely. And that's... Make all of those things easier, right, Fee? Yeah. Oh, just... And that's what I was just saying then, Carvey, that you're pumping on a pen. You're doing it anyway. Really. So, yeah. You're doing it now, Carvey. The only difference is she will only need one needle every three days or two days. Um, You're doing it now. Do you know what I mean? Everybody that is on um, flexible insulin delivery, they're giving around six injections a day. Do you know what I mean? At least, you know, four to six. Some are eight, some are 10. You know, you're pumping on pins. Um, I think you'll do amazing. The thing I would just say is, can I please have the criteria of, you know, when do I call? Who do I call? Um, What happens if something happens on Christmas Day? um you know all of that type of any stuff of those, and any of those times that you're worried about just yeah. just sort of find out a bit of a plan so you can be prepared for them because if we're prepared then then they don't they don't often happen for a start but they often you know then we've got a plan of what to do and Renee just, is, her, her so, just turned five-year-old went on a pump this week and it's the best thing they've ever done so go with that and you know take that is what I would say because I think um for lots of people um generally going on a pump is a is a good experience, hopefully. Um, um, for everyone, Mel, though, I'm going to actually give another top fee top tip. That is, please, please, please get a, a plan for if your pump breaks over the Christmas period. I actually um, work in private practice as well, and I was in lockdown for Christmas, so I was it was fine. I was home. But I actually got a phone call from someone that the pump actually died Christmas Day, and um, we had to make up a plan for them. So um, please, especially if you're in the public system, um, make sure that you get a plan in case your pump breaks down, what optisolin dose you would have and what um, how you would do your um you know, insulin for the food, really important because especially over Christmas, it can take seven to eight days to get a pump due to all the public holidays. So that's a very good top tip.
And I know I've, I think I've said this story before, so apologies for some people that may have heard it before, but I, I always have this example of about being prepared. So my son, when he was, I don't know, 10 or something, we were going to the football with his friends and we realised when we were in the car that he'd left his pump at home in the bathroom after he'd had a shower, he'd not put his pump back on, which kind of blows my mind that he would forget that. But, you know, he's 10, he was excited, he wanted to go to the footy with his friends. But because we were prepared and from the beginning we'd always carried a kit that's got a spare needle and his pricker and all these sorts of stuff in there, then instead of having to turn around and, and cancel the footy and not and go home to put the pump back on and then, you know, miss it all together, we were able to just dose and work out what our his rates were and use the, the pens while we were out. Because the last thing we want is for diabetes to get in the way. And if, God, if we'd had to cancel that and not get to go to the footy game with his mates, that would have been horrendous and, you know, cause lots of issues for him. Um, so that planning and that having that backup and that extra bit of, um, you know, just your, your backup plan always around, hopefully will stop those things, you know, diabetes getting in the way and then being able to hate it for any other reason, for extra reasons. Um, but, yeah, so I think that preparedness is um, is really handy. And it's a really good habit to get into. It's hard. It's it's a bit tricky now with all these CGMs. You don't have to take. Apparently, we don't have to carry prickers with us anymore. I'm from old school now, where the pricker went everywhere we go. Ah, uh, see, like, I'm old school. Like we don't have to carry it, and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Um, do not yeah. let anyone convince you otherwise. A finger yeah. pricker, keto strips need to go everywhere. We and have lots of times that he's been caught out. So when he's been at TAFE and when he's been at places, he's always got a set and. A spare set and insulin and ketone strips, that's always in that kit. And oftentimes he's had to use it when I'm nowhere near. So um, it's been really handy. It's been a really good habit to get into. So if I can encourage that sort of habit to keep having that stuff around local somewhere with you so that um, diabetes doesn't get to cut. Because some, some, it's very easy to blame diabetes for stuff. When if we do our bit, then diabetes doesn't actually get in the way. It shouldn't really get in the way. So it's about being prepared and trying to plan, you know, set ourselves up to succeed would be my saying I would have on my wall. Um, Harvey, they will actually tell you about an emergency kit that they want you to carry everywhere with you. Yeah. Yeah. We have got, yeah, we have got one of them um, for the injections as well because she goes to kindy and we have kept the emergency kit there, one at home, actually multiple. It's just the pens, pen is the only one, only thing is traveling and the um uh the um uh the monitor at the moment um but yeah very looking forward for the pump but at the same time a bit worried as well yeah. i think as a mom uh yeah. and as you know most of us doing the first thing for the first time it's a change isn't it and it's always stressful yeah. there's always bits and pieces that we wonder how it's going to work so i think sarah's just said they agree the pumps are lazy and flexible once you like the site changes because sometimes site changes and set changes can be quite challenging um, depending on the age of your child and those sorts of things. So sometimes, um, you know, that can be hard. That can be a tricky part for parents to, to try and manage and, and navigate, especially if our kids are little um, and not wanting them. Um, so, again, you can chat to your team about ways to help and support with those sorts of things. But, but it's just all new stuff. There's all new bits that you think, where are you going to put it? What are they going to do when they go to the toilet? You know, like, you know, the kids need to learn the... Boys need to learn that. What is it? See, I don't even know what you call it. You got to pull your undies out and then down. You don't just pull your undies straight down anymore. You know, like so. It's a you know, you don't just pull your undies down like a normal child would. If you've got your set change in your bum, you've got to pull your undies out first and then down. Otherwise, they rip it out all the time. And you know, all little bits and tricks that you'll find along the way about where you have it and what you can hold your your pump in. But it's all bits that you learn as you go. You know, it's not nothing's. Nothing's such a big problem that you wouldn't try it. You know, nothing's such a big barrier, yeah. I would say, um, that you wouldn't wouldn't make you try those sorts of things. Um, but, yeah, it's exciting. It's an exciting time, I think. The other thing to remember, which I have to do because I didn't do it today, um, is make sure you've got scripts yes. and enough supplies over the Christmas time. Yeah, start because, getting them on now. You know, we just worked out that my son's only got four pens left in the fridge. Um mm. You know, so that's not ideal and we don't have a, a script that I can just go fill. So we need to get a script from the doctor and, and do all that sort of stuff. That's a bit sucky on um, our end. Not not setting ourselves up to succeed very well in that sense, but 
<laughs> Can I just say the really cool thing with the script is that if you're traveling and something happens or you forget it, that you can go in Australia, you can just go to another chemist and yep. get it. Okay. So that's really, really important. Another um, really important thing to remember, pro, um, insulin is a protein, so it denurtures. So therefore, if it's left in a hot car, left on the beach, um, it is not going to work as effectively. And you could all of a sudden go, why are we sitting at 20? Um, if that is happening, we everybody around the world recommends throw out that insulin, get a new one, um, because heat can actually affect it. If you're heading over to Europe or um, the US um, for uh, UK for a white winter, um, freezing insulin will have the same effect. The pro um, the insulin will denurture as well. So um, that's just a, important to remember. Um, Melinda, um, you were saying that your daughter is, sorry, it might be your son actually, is um, on mm -hmm. pens and you're worried about that. Please don't worry about that. When yeah, he's I, ready for a pump, he'll be ready for a pump. Yeah, being um, 17, uh, he's very self-conscious and he's a bit sensory as well. So I know when we were in hospital, when he went in, um, when he was diagnosed and he had all the cannulas in, he was very distressed. So I think he kind of thinks of it that way. Yeah. And, you know, I think he's only, new, he's only newly diagnosed, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, six weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there just needs to be time for that just to settle. Yeah. You know, like I think um, I remember when my son was diagnosed, them talking about a pump and I was like, no way. I remember thinking, not a chance. This is not what I want. I don't want anything attached to him. Now I'm like, I would not. If he ever told me he didn't want it, I think I would lose my mind. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I think sometimes he just needs time and he might need time, you know, and you don't want to relate that. The, you know, those cannulas and stuff can be pretty traumatic at hospital. Those, you, you know, the, the experience you have at hospital can be quite nasty sometimes. Um, and so then if they're thinking that it's the same kind of thing, then that's going to impact the way he's thinking about a pump as well. Um, yeah. Some of the best things that, you know, kids that don't want pumps or, you know, they'll often see other kids with pumps and and see, see that it's not such a big deal and all those worries that they have. Um, you know, sometimes they just need to see it and they just need some time, I think. I would always well, encourage people to try pumps because I think they're great. But you can also do, there's like smart pens and things now, like Fee was saying. So, you know, we can do flexible dosing, but Medtronic's got their, what's it called? The eye pen, in pen? The pen, yeah. The pen. Um, that's like a pump without a pump. So it's got all the smartness and does all the calculations and things that way as well. So there's lots of different options. Um, is he using CGM? Yeah. 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 So it's not bad. It's, 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 it's a CGM. It's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I have to put it on though. He won't. Yeah. Oh, look, I still, look, my son's 18 and he still says, Mum, can you just put it on? You know, he's there. Yeah. You know, as a mum, I don't, I feel like I don't have an issue with us having to help in that sense. What I want is them to be able to do it themselves. So if I'm not there, it's not becoming a problem. So I, if, if he doesn't want to do it because it's just a pain in the bum, <laughs> literally, mm -hmm. I'm happy to do that for him. Um, and it's because it's another thing he's got to think about or do. I'm quite happy to do that. Um, but it's only on the on the condition that he knows how to do it if I'm not there and he's not going to not do what needs to be done if I'm not there. So I think it's about making sure they can learn that skill. Again, he's only new, but so can, they can learn that and be competent in it as well to be by themselves, especially 17-year-olds going to want to be going out and doing stuff at some stage, hopefully. Melinda, um, yeah. um, have a chat to your team because I know that um, any of the, our kids or um, young te or teens that – um, have got sensory issues, we'll actually get them to come in um, and I'll work with them over a number of weeks and um, just to feel initially what the tape feels like, then to put a line in, feel what that feels like. That might not be a very nice one. And if yeah. they want to rip it out straight away, they can. Um, it's surprising what you can do when there's things like Buzzy B that um, it's a B and it buzzes and it sends the pathway different for pain and you can put that down and then put a sight in. Um, and I must admit that I must admit I've actually been able to conquer all of them with that. Um, mm -hmm. So if it's that they're worried about that, and they'll tell you, I often find my teens, even my little kids go, I just don't like the feeling. I just, and I'll say, well, can we try something? You know, I'm a big fan of those squishy toys and things like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're doing this and then you're putting in a site, um, have a chat to your team. You'll be surprised what's out there. Yeah. Okay. I think that sometimes they have worries that they don't know how to to, that, to work out either. Like it's sometimes, you know, sometimes a teenage girl, they're like, I, I don't know where I'm going to be able to put it or I'm not, you know, 
there are ways around all of that. You know, my son put holes in the pockets of his pants now. So it sits, it's in there. So it's not seen. It's just the cord that hangs out a bit. But so it's a way it's not clicked on the outside, but he can put it because he's got to have his shirt tucked in for work. So, you know, that makes it all tricky, but there's ways around all of it that um, sometimes they, you know, when you're in that sort of headspace where it's like, nope, I don't want it, you know, that teenage brain, I don't want it. This is too hard. I'm not doing it then sometimes it's because there's those little bits that they just don't know how to work out. And like they were saying, I used to have families come in and we'd have the sets and we'd practice the sound and we'd see what it was like just to familiarise them with it so it's not this unknown. Same for parents because parents get worried about all of those things too. It's not just the kids. Often yeah. the parents are a bigger barrier um, than, than the child themselves in terms of some of these things because they're worried um, about that sort of stuff. I just wanted to jump in. Fiona, before when you were talking about insulin um, getting too hot, uh, yeah. is there a way to tell if it's kind of, I know people have asked this before, is there a way to tell if it's kind of gone off, like if it's reached this point and shouldn't be used or is it just? There's nothing, yeah, it's, there's nothing really. visible. Well, oh, there... sometimes, they, sometimes they can go cloudy. Um, I would say the main, you can't otherwise tell, mm -hmm. um, yeah, especially if it's been a boiling hot day mm -hmm. and then everything cools down. If you can feel insulin's warm, hot, then throw it out. But the problem is if um, you get it at the end of the day and you go, oh, it's cool, but it's probably hit those high temperatures during the day. My, and I know this is a round the world type thing, if you've left insulin in the car and it's a warm day, throw it out. Don't even touch it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Melinda, what you said about your son reminded me a lot of my son, even though my son's a fair bit younger than yours, but um, mm. he was so anti the pump. And I think a lot of it was, that, yeah, he's diagnosed, like, everything about when he got diagnosed, you know, the drips, they had multiple attempts to get it in, like, it was all just super traumatic. And I think he kind of, in his brain, it was this, it was going back to the hospital to do a new, like, I don't know, he, it was just like the same category. And in the end, he loves birds and he's been asking for a bird for, like, ages. And my husband and I ended up saying, oh, you know what, like, we're going to offer it. And so we said if he got, if he did the pump and he did everything we asked of him with the pump, after six weeks we would get a bird. Um, and then and then we said, and it's fine, after six weeks when you've got the bird, it's your choice. We'll go back on the injections if that's better um, or we'll stay on the pump. And, yeah, it still wasn't easy, but it was enough of a thing because he wanted it so bad that it was able to get him over the line and then once he was on it, it's so much better. Like he hated all of the needles and now, you know, he still, he doesn't like the sight changes, but only in the same way that he didn't like doing the needles and he just has to do it every two days instead of, yeah, four times a day. And we have to feed and water the bird every day. But I think that's the thing too, Fee, is that you don't, just because you go on a pump doesn't mean you actually have to stay on it forever. You know, no, like, but there's no yeah. way he'd go back off it yeah. now. But I like, think sometimes that's the worry as well. And I think for parents, yeah. that, you know, it's such a big cost. It's this, you know, I think that having that option to go, you know what, if this actually doesn't work out, you don't have to do it. You can actually go back to it. But in that, it's kind of like you've got to give it a fair chance and you've got to give it a go. You can't decide after a day I'm not doing it. Um, but, you know, you've got to agree to give it a bit of a go and then um, – and then see, then we can chat about it after that. I think that's, I think it's an interesting point for the kids to understand that this is not a, and for parents, um, this is not a sign up for life and you can never change it back. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm not sure at 18, a big incentive, like next thing you know, he'll be asking for a car or something. Like I think it's easier at seven. Sarah's saying we reach these rewards every now and then when our son's finding harder. I think it's, I think, you know, we know rewards work. But we all need rewards and we all need incentives, kids and adults. We all need, we all need incentives sometimes. There's actually, no, there's nothing wrong with that. So I think don't, don't get caught up in that. I think, you know, this stuff is not stuff anybody's choosing to have to do. You know, when nobody wants, nobody's going to choose to, yes, give me a needle every three days. I love it. You know, that's not that's not a choice that every anyone would actively do. So I think some incentives to try stuff and be brave and, and do that sort of stuff. I think I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. TV for sight changes, I like that. That's very good. So you get to watch TV for sight changes? Is that the yeah, like it. I remember an educator once saying you've got to give them ten dollars every time and I was like, I don't know where where your families live. Not anywhere like it's not happening in my world, giving them ten dollars for every 
every set change. It's like, no, thank you. Back, back in the day, it was like you can have a sticker where you can watch you can watch a show on the iPad while we do it or there's, you know, little bits and pieces like that that help. But, even um, like, oh, sorry, go for it. I was going to say, even things that don't cost money. So um, I'm a really big one about, you know, a lot of kids like just going to go kick the ball, at the, the soccer ball at the park or they like a family picnic. So, hey, you know, let's do this. And I'm, I find a lot of that works really, really well. And the really nice thing about it is it normalises life too. Let's do a site change. And then we're going to go to the park or, hey, we'll do it early in the morning because then we'll go to the soccer, we'll go to the market. Um, and I find kids really respond well to that because, you know, it's getting on with life and that often was a really good way. Melinda's just asking, can we get insulin overseas in an emergency? That is a very good question. Um, travel insurance, so, so very important, okay? So you really need to. So, for example, in America, one pen would be 400 US dollars, which would set me back around 700 bucks. So when you're traveling, and we've done one this year, and we can do another one next year, um, which I think would be great to do another one, um, is to always pack double your supplies. So such as when we went last week, um, my husband had supplies in his hand luggage, um, I had supplies in my hand luggage. I had a cross bag that I had um, enough for a week's supply in my cross bag. And my husband had a bum bag with enough for three line changes um, because I wasn't paying that much money. Um, but yes, you will be able to access insulin in other countries as long as it's not, um, you know, in a third world country. Um, it's just that you'll be using your travel insurance um, and things like that. But really, um, I had an amazing young um teens that were 19 year olds that went traveling around Europe for six months and we had this big discussion I said you have to take double I don't care um, I go even more I go triple sometimes I go yeah, triple the split it well guess what happened to them they got their bags stolen and I get this frantic phone call saying we've lost a bag I said that's okay split the other one in two yeah yeah but yes longer the answer for that is yes you can Get in some third world countries could be difficult, um, but you can always take enough over there. Um, but the other thing is your travel insurance. If you have travel insurance, they will actually fly you out if you're in an area that couldn't. And you can get travel insurance with type one. Oh, easy. Yeah. What do you know? What type of travel insurance? Uh, I, I don't think there's any. Is it extra fee? Is it? I think you, you have to declare that you've got that your child's got type one. Yeah. Look, look at the. What does everyone cover? No, so what you've got to know, you need to, look, it's insurance. So, you know, they're in it to make money, all right? So you've got to read the fine print. So, for example, I nearly got caught out a couple of years ago because pre-pandemic, um, when I looked at it, their um, insulin pumps were covered. But they were covered for $2,000. That mm -hmm. wasn't going to cut the mustard, all right? So when I travelled this time, I had my pump insured for the, the replacement price as well. So you need to look at the fine print. You need to ask. Um, there's a, quite a few out there that are really good and do really good coverage, but it is really important. I think I paid an extra 80 bucks for having type one this time, but peace of mind was fine. Yeah, I think I think the first time we went overseas and I think we went to Fiji, Melinda, you're saying you're going to Fiji. I think the only issue, we, we had an issue because it's like had they been hospitalised in the year prior? And I'm yeah. Like, well, yeah. Because he was only diagnosed and it, was, it wasn't even a year. But in terms of that sort of stuff, it didn't really, it was just about finding ones that, it's just about looking and finding them and, and doing your quotes and, and seeing what comes back um, and okay. seeing what they're covered for. Thank you. Can I do a shout out? Yes, go on holidays for sure. Yeah, this is my favourite bag and I wear this on the plane. And I'll just show you, it's so super cool. There's like three parts and now we've been back. I haven't quite, um, I haven't refueled, of course. This part here, my spare pump is in there. Remember, if you're with Medtronic, you can get a spare travel lo a loan pump. It's 50 bucks, uh, but best 50 bucks you've got. Um, I've got a section here where my um, needle can go, stuff like that, my sights. Then it has a middle section. And you can, you can just see how chaotic mine is now. Um, and we put everything in there with spare pens, we had Panadol, we had you name it, spare line, spare another line. And I oh, just for, you know, hold on, huh, spare another line. So that was the middle. And then at the back, my favourite little part, it's insulated as well. So I put enough in. Yeah, there's heaps of bags and things around like that that you can, so sort of, you can find that um, 
lots of so good. I've made that make some of these things a bit easier. And I had this on the plane the whole time as I flew because if you get, um, what do you call it? What's that bumpiness? Um, so turbulence. Yeah, that's a word. You're not allowed to get up to get your supplies. So if you keep it on you in a bum bag or a cross bag, then nothing's a problem. I've just had a um, prior, like a question from Ferdinand, just asking if there's been a change in policy with pumps, Melanie. In terms of, um, he said, since the sugars were sixty to seventy percent high or very high, we were taken off the pump wait list, but now it seems to be a change in policy, and we can imply. Any idea what's happening? As long as um, a child has support would be the main thing. Yeah. Uh, everyone can get a pump, all right? Yeah. But some teams have their different things for guidelines and things like that. That's not to say it's right. That's not to say it's wrong. That's just what that actual guideline is. But that's where you need to use your voice. Where we have a squeaky wheel and a, and a noisy yes. parent is what I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. But there's nothing in Australia to say. Um, that you can't have a pen if your timing range is 60% or less. Um, yeah. Can I just say to you, though, there is in Australia, we have to, as health professionals, sign off a form to say you've engaged with your healthcare professional. Yes, I believe you're going to follow up with your team. All of those things we have to sign off on. Um, but I want to make sure, you know, they need to make sure that you're safe on the pump and that you yeah. understand um, all of the bits and pieces that go with being on a pump. Um, but, yeah, I'd be trying to understand that a bit more and find out what, you know, there's some things for you when you're on small amounts of small doses of insulin that you, there's, you know, things like that. If you've got to be on a certain amount of insulin to go in auto so, mode and things, but. That's yeah. actually only like for, you know, to get into like the control. Auto mode, isn't it? Yeah, it's not even just, you can still use the pump. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh, my, my cranky mum hat feels like it's coming on there and saying I would like to ask more questions and push back a little bit. Um, to all of you who have um, stayed on tonight, those that had to leave a bit earlier, but those that have still stayed on, um, you know, we're with you, mate. This is, we're, we've got the best tribe, T1 tribe, we're all there. Um, we don't know what your journey is like. I don't know what your journey is like, but I know my journey. And my journey is some days I wake up and go, this sucks. And that's okay, but I still get on with it. Um, please remember that Christmas is a time, Christmas, Hanukkah, all of those things is a time for to be with our families, food. Diabetes isn't the, the middle thing. You've got two weeks. Get onto your teams. Um, and if you're ever not feeling it, you're getting the answers right again. Be that squeaky wheel. Um, and from me down here in uh, Victoria, I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas, very Happy New Year. And please know you're not alone in, in this journey. So I echo Fee, have a lovely break. And I want you all, like Fee was saying before, on Boxing Day, I don't want you to say, oh, you know, the only thing I remember about Christmas is diabetes was stupid. We just want to say Christmas was really good. I ate way too much food and we all had a good day. That's what we want from Christmas.